brings Sherry Gorman here uh, to the waters of baptism this morning. Sherry, how you doing? Good, good. Why don't you tell people a little bit of your story, a little bit about what life was like before you came to faith in Jesus Christ? Um, my happiness was always fleeting. I often felt lonely, sad, and lost. I felt like I didn't belong or fit properly into this world. I was raised in a Catholic family, baptized as a baby, and believed in God, but I didn't know him. I didn't know the Bible or Jesus' teachings. My whole life, I did feel protected by something or someone. Not knowing where this came from, I searched endlessly for answers through spirituality. However, any peace or understanding I found wasn't lasting. This world always left me feeling alone. I often didn't want to live this life as I was, as I couldn't find a purpose or make the world make sense to me. I carried so much sadness, hurt, guilt, and shame. I didn't know God's love for me, and never feeling truly loved, I couldn't truly give my love. The only hope I had lied in people, which always ended in disappointment. My only happiness came from the love I had for my children. They were the reason to live. But then you came to find the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And so tell us a little bit about how you came to faith in Jesus Christ. Um, I definitely came through tribulations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In 2020, during the pandemic, my youngest son became very ill. A metabolic condition he was diagnosed with at age seven worsened, leading to hyperammonia, brain swelling, and a coma. In ICU, with every machine you can imagine hooked up to him, his coma and brain swelling continued day after day. During these days, I asked my best friend, who was a Christian, for Bible-based books to read, which I read nightly in an attempt to rest my mind. I leaned into the stories of Jesus for personal comfort. After 10 days now, with my son still in a coma, I asked the doctors an extremely hard question. Will he be okay? Will he come out of this? Watching the doctor's face fill with sadness and pain, he said, if he survives, there's a very high chance of brain injury. So prepare for the boy I knew prior not to be the one returning to us. Devastated but refusing to accept this as truth, I prayed. I held onto faith with every ounce of my being. I begged God for one more chance to be a mom to the boy that I knew and loved. Please God, I will do anything. I will change my life. Please give us both another chance at our beautiful life together. My other boys and I could not survive without him. He was so special from day one. He brought so much joy to our family. So we prayed, myself and hundreds of others, in prayer groups at churches, our families, our friends, and we prayed for a miracle. Our prayers were heard, and two days later, we got our first miracle. My son woke from his coma perfectly healthy. It was truly a miracle. Sadly, medical mistakes were made and hours later he was back in a coma with severe brain swelling again. They then made more mistakes, which dropped his blood pressure so low that all the medicine they had could not raise it. They told us there was nothing more they could do. Hold your son. A moment after these devastating words, his blood pressure spiked up with no intervention or medical reason. It was our second miracle. This allowed doctors time to treat the brain swelling once again and pull him out of his coma once again, this time with evident brain injury. My son was alive. He was unable to speak, behaving like a two-year-old, but he was alive. The doctor said he would need to go into a rehab center for two months. He had to learn to sit up, to stand, to walk and talk again, in hopes that his brain would recover fully in time. Day by day, he got better quickly. And one week later, my son and I walked out of sick kids. No rehab needed. He was perfectly healthy. <laughs> So miracle number three, without a doubt, God saved my son, and in doing so, saved me. 
Since that day, I've spent every day learning how to live as a Christian, studying the Bible, learning who Jesus is, healing, and getting closer to God. Lord's grace on display. So, um, we normally say what's one thing you want people to know about Jesus. <laughs> um, but you just go ahead and tell them what, however you want. What do you want people to know about your Savior, Jesus Christ? And I, yeah, I have more than one thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what astonishes me the most after all I have learned is how so many people in this world wish that life came with a manual. It does. The Bible. Mm. Jesus' messages are so clear to me, and for that I am so grateful for the gift of hearing, seeing, and understanding his word. I believe Jesus came to us, God in human form, to usher in his kingdom and demonstrate what life looks like under his lordship. He died sinless, the ultimate sacrifice, paying the penalty for our human sin, showing us true love and giving us a way out of this fallen world. There's a war going on between good and evil, physical wars all over the world, emotional wars between races, families, and even friends, wars within our own minds. I urge you to study spiritual warfare. Do your homework. I had someone close to me declare Jesus just one, one of many prophets, just like Muhammad. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance can lead to death. Evil pushes us towards hate, unforgiveness, selfishness, anger, and despair. It leads so many searching for an escape through any means. Good leads us to forgiveness, kindness, selflessness, selflessness, and hope. I knowing deep in your heart that you are loved and not alone, never forsaken. This leads you to a fulfilled life on this earth and an eternal life after in the glory of God. To know and understand the gifts of God's grace, you truly have to hand your life over to God in full surrender and with full faith. Once you feel the freedom of giving up control of your life and dwell in a place of full trust, you will finally know peace. Nothing from this world will give you this peace and this love. I urge anyone who doesn't know Jesus to introduce yourself. If you know him but need more understanding, take a Bible study course and dive fully into your church family. Most importantly, I ask if you call yourself a Christian, please be a true Christian. Our world sadly has so many reasons not to believe. Be the true light that our world desperately needs and represent Christianity the way that Jesus has taught us to. Amen. That's a good word, absolutely. And where we heard uh, this morning, the Lord is speaking and he certainly spoke Sherry, are you a follower of Jesus Christ? I am. And why do you want to be baptized today? To honor the Bible's teachings and publicly declare my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> well, based on your profession of faith, it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 